Number 71. Outline the steps needed to determine the limiting reactant when 0.5 moles of chromium, Cr, and 0.75 moles of H3PO4, phosphoric acid, react according to the following chemical equation. Thank goodness they give us a balanced equation. I'm just going to write that down over here. You know I need to write it big, right? So 2Cr plus 2H3PO4 is going to produce 2 CrPO4, and then it looks like 3H2. Okay, now the only thing we have to do here is to determine the limiting reactant. So I already see that they gave us coefficients, right? So I'm going to assume that this is already balanced, but you could, you know, always pause the video and just make sure that it's balanced. But I'm going to go ahead and say that this is balanced. So I'm going to outline the steps and then we're just going to get to it. This one's pretty straightforward, mainly because they did give us a balanced equation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to list out what we have. Okay. So they told us that I had 0.5 moles of chromium. Here's the chromium. I'm just going to say that I have 0.50 moles. And they told us that I had 0.75 moles of the H3PO4. Okay, so that step's done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a chart. For limiting reactants, you can make a, ooh, that's a little bit, let me just make this a little clearer. Make a chart. Basically, for limiting reactants, what I like to do is I like to set up the left side of the equation as like a little chart. So I'm going to put a line down the middle between the two reactants and then a line this way. So now it's like a four-tiered chart thingy right here. The first piece of information is what I have. The second piece of information is what we have to solve for, and that's what I need. So this is how we're going to solve for the limiting reactant. And now we're ready to do it. Basically, the third step is you're going to find the limiting reactant. And we always find the limiting reactant by using stoichiometry. We've seen this time and time again, right? Grams to moles to moles to grams. However, the unit that they, they started us with is mole, and the other one is mole. So in this case, you know, you don't really have to go to grams. I'm going to keep everything in moles, so that means bye-bye to grams. I don't need that. And bye-bye to grams, right? The whole, that whole thing was like the usually the general one, but you could always cut it shorter than what, you know, depending on your situation. Now, whenever we're going to be doing this, what you're going to say is you're going to say, okay, you either start with the 0.5 moles of the chromium, or you're going to start with the 0.75 moles of the phosphoric acid. I don't care which one you start with, but whichever one you start with, you're always going to be finding for the other compound. So if you choose 0.5 moles of chromium, you're going to be solving for how much you need of the phosphoric acid. And if you start with the 0.75 moles of the H3PO4, you're going to solve for how much you need of the chromium. Since this is on the left-hand side, I guess we'll start with that. We'll say that I have 0.50 moles of Cr, and I just want to find out how many moles of the H3PO4 do I need. So it's just a one-stepper, right? 0 0.50, and maybe I'll just color code this. We have moles of chromium. Make that ratio. Mole of chromium goes on the bottom. And the mole of the phosphoric acid goes up on the top. Okay. And now a mole-to-mole -mole conversion of different compounds is always the balanced equation. And this is just the coefficients. So you just look where these are on the periodic table. Well, here is the H3PO4. I have two of them. And here is the chromium. I have two of them. So it's a two to two ratio, technically a one to one. But we'll keep the same numbers. We'll say two and two. So now if I just cancel out the unit that I can and just do the math, it literally would be the same number. 0.50 moles of H3PO4. 
And this is the number that goes here. So I'm just going to write that out. Okay. Now the math is done. All we have to do is now conceptualize this and talk about it, right? This you'll obviously do in your mind when you're on a test or quiz, but we're going to talk it out together. So if you have 0.75 moles and you only need 0.5 to run this reaction, will there be any left over? You have 0.75 and you only need 0.5. Yeah, there is going to be some excess. So in here, you will have excess. You have more moles than what you need. You're going to be over by 0 0.25 moles, right? If you do the subtraction, 0.75 minus 0.5, that's going to be a 0.25 mole of excess that you don't use. And if you have it in excess, that's called the excess reactant. That is not the limiting reactant. Reactant. So H3PO4 is the excess one. That means that the chromium would be the limiting. And if we went the other way to find out the number for this, this number would be higher than what you have. So basically it would be like 0 0.7 or something. But do you see how you need way more than what you have? There would be no left over. That's what the limiting reactant is. So by figuring out one of them, you could always find out whether you have the excess or the limiting and then go from there. So in this case, determine the limiting reactant, it's the chromium. And that's the end of the day. So there's the answer, guys. CR is the limiting reactant. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, okay? Love helping you guys out, and I hope you guys are doing well out there. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and tell your friends, all right? I'll see you in future lessons. Bye-bye.